Today I'm going to talk to you about cutting your cable. Most people think about doing this as a means of saving money, but you can also supplement your current cable subscription by doing this as well. Uh, so don't feel put off um, if you think of this as, oh, I'm going to get rid of your my cable. It's It can go both ways, and you might find that even though um, you know, you want to cut your cable, cutting your cable might not be the best choice for you in the long run. So I'm just going to step you through some of the things that you should probably consider and also talk to you about the things that you'll need to purchase so that you can cut your cable successfully. The first thing I'd like to talk about is some definitions, just so that we all have a baseline uh, for what we're talking about. Cord cutting is canceling cable or satellite TV services to use video streaming services that are accessed through the internet. Streaming is the process of using an internet connection to receive and playback video or media in real time. Content doesn't need to be downloaded, but it is played back um, when the data is received. OTT stands for over the top. This is often referring to the media companies that provide a range of entertainment programming to internet users directly without um, a cable or satellite company. Those companies are Hulu, Netflix, YouTube. I'm sure you're all very familiar with those. Um, we're also going to talk about definition and definition uh, strictly in the regards to the quality of video image you see on your screen. So some examples are HD or high definition, ultra HD or 4K. Those are kind of um, the different options that are uh, currently available for screens um, now. Set top boxes. Um, this is the internet connected device that allows a TV to display your over the top programs. These devices can be USB sticks, literal little boxes, um, and once they're installed, they provide a menu that allows you to access uh, the different applications. So you have your OTT service, so you have Netflix, let's say, and maybe you also have Hulu, um, but your set-top box provides the software that talks to the TV and it talks to these um, essentially content providers. So if you have a Roku or a Chromecast or Amazon Fire, Apple TV, those are set top boxes. And um, when you open them on your computer um, or when you open them on your uh, TV, you see little uh, apps essentially that allow you to access those different content providers. Finally, um, we're going to talk about ISPs. This stands for Internet Service Provider. Examples are Mediacom, CenturyLink, South Slope. Those are the providers in our area. The next thing that I want you to kind of think about when you're cutting your cable is uh, asking yourself a series of, of different questions. So. What kinds of shows do I watch and enjoy frequently? Um, the broader your taste in TV programming, the more likely um, subscribing to a whole bunch of over-the-top uh, services uh, to replicate your cable experience will be just as expensive as subscribing to cable. Um, and that isn't really saving you any money from your cable bill. So just kind of consider that if you have really broad taste, um, that can actually be a, a big detriment in, in doing this. Another thing you should consider is do you surf to find content? So when you're watching TV, do you sit down with the remote and you're like, I'm just going to keep clicking until I find something that I want? Or do you actually know what you want to watch when it's on and that's when you decide to watch your programming? Um, many people um, that want to get out of the satellite and cable contracts um, that like to surf, um, that is a little bit more difficult using uh, the over-the-top uh, subscriptions. Um, 
how confident do you feel about managing multiple companies and providing entertainment? Right now, you just have one devil. Maybe it's Mediacom. Um, but with these other uh, companies, yes, they per yes they provide content services for a much little, much um, smaller price. Uh, but you might have like three or four of them. And if you're unhappy at any point with your service, you have to figure out like, I have to call this person and get rid of this service. Um, and you know, you're, you'll probably be dealing with at least three of these, um, content providers as opposed to just one content provider. Another thing to consider is whether or not uh, your local or network television programs are important to you. Uh, purchasing an HD antenna um, might be your best option if you're looking at local programming and network channels um, to keep your costs down. There are some uh, benefits and drawbacks to, to doing that. Um, one is you'll have to put an an antenna on each of your TVs. Um, antennas are uh, limited based on where your house is. Uh, so, you know, if you live out in the country, you might not get a very good digital signal. So even if you have an antenna, you still may not get all of the programming that you get through your cable company. Um, there are other services out there, and we'll talk about them a little bit later, that do provide local programming, but you have to know um, and do a little bit of research to find out which ones those are. Um, so uh, that's also um, some considerations as whether or not your local television network is really important. Uh, do you watch a wide variety of sports programming? So... I mean, if you're into baseball and you're just really into baseball, that um, usually isn't a big deal. But if you like baseball, football, soccer, um, a lot of times replicating the sports programming experience is going to be really tricky uh, because a lot of these services you have to subscribe to by sport. And honestly, the NFL is a complete disaster. So if you want to watch the NFL, um, even with their subscription packages, you might not be able to get all of the games that you used to get um, by watching cable. And finally, kind of the last thing to consider is what is my monthly cost for entertainment, including cable costs with equipment, trips to the theater, movie rentals, um, just kind of all of those things um, kind of lump in there because you're also going to have to consider the costs of subscribing to these other content providers and purchasing uh, set-top boxes so you can access those services. So you want to kind of make a comparison list, especially if the reason for doing, um, for, for cutting your cable is to save money. You want to make sure you're going to come out ahead of the game with that. So the tools for um, doing this successfully are uh, fourfold. So the first thing you really need is a speedy and reliable internet connection. It's because you're streaming, um, you need direct connection to the server that has the content. Um, the better that connection is, um, the more likely and and the more likely um, you're going to get the content delivered to you in a way um, that is enjoyable. Uh, what's recommended is having a connection with an average speed of four megabytes per second. Um, and what you want to do is also identify any dead spots in your home where your Wi-Fi may not reach. So. Uh, if you do have a router, you want to make sure that that router covers all of the areas in which you're trying to stream content um, so that you don't have dead spots in your house where if you're downstairs in your basement, you can never um, get internet connection uh, because there's a dead spot down there. That, that wouldn't be very um, helpful to you. Another thing that you need to consider is the screen that you view the content on. This could be a TV, but it can be a tablet, a laptop, a smartphone. Um, 
Newer TVs, unfortunately, will require a faster internet connection than four megabytes per second. Um, the higher quality um, definition of your TV requires more um, megabytes for streaming, um, just to make sure that quality transfers. That um, So there is a couple ways of figuring out what is possible um, in the area. So you can do a couple of things. So if you already have a um, internet provider, you can actually go to their website. So I'm gonna just quickly go there. So with Mediacom, there, I, I will say, on Mediacom's website, um, it is very difficult to see what kind of connection you can get without talking to a person. You can't just use your, their website, type in your zip code, and figure out, do they provide 12 megabytes per second, 20, 60? Um, they really don't give that option. However, if you do subscribe to Mediacom, um, what you can do is check your speed on your devices at home. So that speed test can kind of give you a baseline for what you um, might be subscribed to, but I would recommend calling Mediacom if that is who um, you uh, get internet from uh, to see what exactly you're paying for because you should I mean your device should reflect um, the speed that you're essentially paying your provider to give you so there can be some hang-ups um, based on the type of you know device that you are using um, but doing that speed test and then talking to your provider is a good place to start. So if I went to, I just went to speedtest.mediacomtoday.com uh, mediacom and I hit go, it's going to uh, do a little test for me. It's gonna show me my download speeds and then it's gonna show me my upload speeds. Um, just a quick little refresher. Upload is anything that you are um, putting on someone else's server or computer. Um, so you're going from your computer to another one. Download is when you're taking information from a computer and then putting it on your own. Um, so um, here we have some pretty good um, download and upload speeds through uh, Mediacom. They would say that uh, we'd have 63.8 or 68.7. Um, that's not terribly surprising to me um, because we're in the downtown area. Uh, but I'm going to also show you, so CenturyLink is another one of the providers um, for internet here in the area. And I'm going to type in the library's account. And um, essentially what I'm going to do is just basically see what kind of high-speed internet we can get in the area based on the infrastructure that's present. Um, so with CenturyLink, I can get up to 20 megabytes per second or 12 megabytes per second. Those are the two speeds that they um, offer me. Right here, it shows that they're both the same price, so you know why wouldn't you go with a higher one? Um, but knowing what you can get within your area from your internet provider is really important um, and I think is essential to understanding whether or not um, cutting your cable is going to be something worthwhile to you. There are plenty of um, places in Iowa that are rural and they don't have internet speeds that really make streaming worthwhile. Um, so just kind of know that going in. Finally, what you will need, or um, thirdly, I shouldn't say finally, thirdly, um, what you'll need is a set-top box. Um, and that is essentially the hardware um, that you're going to use um, so, so that um, you can access your content provider. Um, they're generally easy to install, and um, 
once you pay for them, you might have to update it like you would a router, um, but it's not something that you have to pay for monthly, um, like a cable box. So you might have a cable box and you might pay like 10 or $15 a month per uh, cable box in your home. Um, once you put down money for a set-top box, it's yours um, for that price for as long as um, you can use it. So you will have to probably purchase a new one after a certain amount of time, um, but typically five years wouldn't be um, too long to keep um, one of these items. Finally, the last thing uh, that you need to purchase um, to do successful streaming is a subscription um, to one of the these services. So whether that's Netflix or whether that's um, Hulu, um, there are also free services you can go to. Um, PBS has an app that you can use um, for free. I do that a lot with my kids. Um, so there's there are pay content providers and free content providers um, that are out there. So just be aware of your options. Talking about content, um, essentially we have the big three of um, over the top uh, service providers. There's Amazon Prime and Amazon Prime uh, has original content, um, some original content. It's pretty thin right now. Um, and original content is just shows that have been developed specifically for those that subscribe to Amazon Prime. Um, it offers some popular movies and TV shows, um, but it does not compare to Netflix or Hulu as far as the breadth of what it offers. Um, one of the biggest benefits of doing Amazon Prime, though, is the fact you get two-day free shipping. So um, even if, um, even though it's not like a direct cost relationship, if you do um, order a lot of things online, it can be well worth your money just to have Prime, even if the um, content is scant. Now, I will say um, it's through my Prime subscription that I can watch The Marvelous Miss Maisel, which got a lot of attention um, last fall when it came out. The new season is supposed to be coming out this fall. Um, so there is content on Amazon that you won't get anywhere else that is still um, worthwhile. The next one is Hulu. Um, Hulu offers a considerable amount of original content like The Handmaid's Tale. Um, Hulu offers current programming from ABC, NBC, and Fox, and a lot of popular older shows. Um, in comparison, um, with pricing, Amazon costs $8.99 a month. Hulu can cost anywhere between $7.99 and $11.99. Um, $7.99 is with advertisement, $11.99 is without. Though I will say that even with um, even at the higher price with $11.99, there are some shows that you will still need, have to watch ads for. Um, I watch New Girl, and with a lot of the Fox programming, Fox still requires that Hulu show an advertisement at the beginning and at the end of their program, even though um, I have the ad-free service. So something to know. Majority of the content is ad-free, but there are a few caveats to that. Uh, finally, ne Netflix. Everybody is pretty familiar with Netflix. It can run you from $7.99 to $13.99. It was the first um, content provider to uh, provide original content, and it has things like Stranger Things and Jessica Jones. Um, they are the forerunner of original content. So. Uh, they have a lot of interesting things that they put out there. Um, they offer um, a good mix of films as well as TV shows, and there's both um, new and old on Netflix. Uh, so those are the big three, but there are a lot of other OTT 
um, services. And I've kind of broken them out by genre. Um, there's British TV, there's sports, there's reality TV, family programs, classic TV, classic movies, um, recent hit movies, and then news and politics. So if you're really into British shows, you can look at Acorn. Um, Netflix carries a good amount. They do the BBC, ITV, and Channel 4 productions. Um, there's also the PBS app with the Masterpiece series. Um, with Netflix, you can always kind of just watch the, sh the BBC shows um, whenever you want. Um, with Masterpiece, if you have the free subscription, um, a lot of times they put up um, – their shows for like a week after they've aired, um, but then they disappear um, after the season is over. So that's something to also kind of con um, think about and consider. Um, sports. Uh, live TV subscriptions are probably the best for fuller coverage sports. And again, we'll talk about um, some live TV options in a bit. Um, otherwise, subscribing to MLB TV um, or NBA League Pass, um, Fubo TV for soccer, um, and again, the NFL is still very tricky. They do offer um, packages, but um, you may not see the uh, the teams that you want to see with those packages. Uh, for reality TV, we have um, lower tier live TV subscriptions like Philo in particular, um, which provide you with reality TV because most of that falls into, most of the reality programs are going to fall into uh, like the main networks, CBS, um, and those aren't typically covered uh, by these other over-the-top services. Uh, classic TV you're looking at Hulu, CBS All Access. CBS isn't really carried on Hulu or Netflix or Amazon, um, so that's something that you have to think about. Um, CBS is making its own game plan there. Um, Me TV and Philo Live um, for shows. So Philo Live provides um, shows that are on Nickelodeon and TV Land. For family programming, again, PBS app, YouTube Kids channel. Um, just know when you're subscribing to YouTube's kid channel, um, while the content might be kid-friendly, the advertising may not be kid-friendly. So just kind of be aware, um, especially if you tend to plunk your kids down and just want them to watch a, a series of shows one after the other, the advertising that might be in place may not be appropriate for them. Um, Boomerang, Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon Prime all have great content for kids. Um, if you're looking for uh, classic movies, uh, Warner I Archive and Amazon Prime and Turner Classic Movies um, comes with some of the live TV packages. So know, know that. Uh, recent hit movies. So while you can get HBO, Showtime, and Stars through your cable, you can also get them as streaming as streaming services as well. Um, and for news and politics, Hulu Live is probably your best option. There isn't a lot of news and politic content out there currently on these for these services, and Hulu Live um, is probably your best option for that. Uh, so we're going to talk quickly now about um, the live TV or cable-like over-the-top services. So a lot of these options mirror um, your cable service, uh, but instead of providing it through the cable network, they are providing it through the internet network. So, um, or your internet connection. So we have Hulu Live, and unlike the regular Hulu um subscription, this cost is $39 as opposed to $7.99. Um, but what you get with this package is all of the um, basic cable channels, um, including ESPN, um, MSNBC, CNN, Fox News, and um, for those that for those of you who like to DVR live programs, um, that is an option here as well. Instead of having a box that um, keeps 
all of that DVR information, you actually end up putting it on um, the Hulu server and you can access it that way. Um, Sling TV um, is kind of a new up-and-comer. It offers a series of packages that have basic cable channels, um, ESPN and ABC and NBC. Um, there's a variety of ranges for pricing, so it starts out as low as $20, um, but can go all the way up to $40. Um, PlayStation View um, is another service. It's accessed through um, your PlayStation device. So if you have a PlayStation, um, this might be a nice seamless fit for you. Uh, the pricing between, for that is between $40 and $75. Um, it offers a large amount of DVR cloud storage and it covers a lot of your local channels as well as major networks um, for you to access. DirecTV Now, so you can subscribe to DirecTV, but DirecTV Now is the streaming service. It um, Its price is between $35 and $75, and um, one of the bigger benefits here is that like cable company or with your internet provider a lot of times, or even your cable company, they will try to roll, like bundle your um, phone, internet, and TV all into one. Um, Direct TV now for AT&T AT &T, um, mobile uh, carriers. So if you have a mobile phone through AT&T, you can get uh, deals, bundled deals with the Direct TV now. So that might be something that would actually save you money if you already are currently doing that. Um, and it gives you the broadest amount of choices uh, for current channels. So um, if you're really looking to mirror that cable experience um, but just use streaming instead, um, this is a great way to go. YouTube TV was just la launched recently in this area. Um, it actually gives the best um, Per, like coverage of local stations. So that's actually the cornerstone of their business model is providing content from local stations. So if that's something that's really important to you is getting um, your news programming or um, things like the library channel or um, whatnot, this is the way to go. Um, you will need to check to make sure that um, any of these services cover this area, um, but I have heard that our area is covered with YouTube TV. Um, what's also really nice about YouTube TV is that it offers you unlimited DVR um, storage. So if you are watching a live event, you um, can record that and then play it back whenever and um, you're not hampered by the amount of storage that you're taking up with your DVR. Um, and finally, Philo um, is the last live TV option. Um, it runs anywhere between $16 to $20. It doesn't have sports. It doesn't have major networks. Um, but it includes things like um, the History Channel, A&E, TV Land, so kind of those um, smaller but familiar cable channels. Um, th that is provided in that subscription. Finally, we're going to talk about set-top boxes. Um, so this is the actual hardware that you will need. We've talked a lot about the content. Um, this, this piece of hardware is what facilitates um, getting content onto your TV or onto your other screens. Um, there's quite a few options. Um, I'm only covering five here, um, but I would encourage you to look at Consumer Reports, Wirecutter, um, or um, the New York Times. All three of those have very good um, kind of coverage about uh, set-top boxes and which is the best and gives you um, a lot of in-depth uh, information about what's good about this as opposed to uh, or what's good about one uh, product as opposed to another. Um, so the first I'm going to mention here is Google Chromecast. Um, probably the biggest and maybe um, the best, the probably the best and worst thing about it is that it um, 
You access it through your phone. So your phone becomes the remote or your tablet becomes the remote or your computer um, becomes the remote. So you can um, be watching or you can want to watch like PBS and you will be you can stream the content directly from your uh, tablet to your TV screen using a Chromecast. Um, so it doesn't have the, the menu options uh, that something like a Roku or an Amazon Fire would have. Um, so there's that. Um, Roku, again, um, there's a large price range here between $29.99 um, and $99.99, so $30, $100. Um, the Roku has a, um, a remote and you access uh, the apps through that. So you would turn on your TV and then you turn on your Roku and um, it has little apps that you would click on. So you would go to, Hulu, you'd click on Hulu to see that content or Netflix. Um, with any of these set top boxes, what you need to know is whether or not they provide an interface to your content. So if you're looking at some of these smaller um, content providers, uh, you know, a Roku, or an Amazon Fire, Apple TV, uh, Sony PS4, or Xbox, they might not they may not provide the software necessary to access these apps or st other streaming services if they're particularly small. Um, so know that going in. Um, if that when you're um, looking up whether or not what you want to buy, um, you need to decide kind of your content first and then come to the set top box part is what I felt was really um, helpful. The Amazon Fire Stick, um, essentially it's just a USB that you plug into your TV. It's, 30, it's 40 to $75 um, and it works a lot like Roku. It's gonna provide you a menu. Apple TV, probably a better choice if you have a lot of other Apple devices. Um, again, its interface is going to be limited to as far as what content providers um, it has. And then Sony PS4 um, or an Xbox, if you already have these gaming systems, you have a set-top box. So um, while they while their pricing is like, expensive, $230 or $190. If you already own the gaming system, you're already in the game. So that's kind of nice. And finally, I'd like to end um, this program by talking about the resources that the public library has to offer. Um, the library has Canopy, which is a streaming service for patrons who live in Iowa City, rural Johnson County, Hills, University Heights, and Lone Tree. And what it does is it provides eight movies per month um, that with your library card and password, uh, you can sign on and stream eight movies per month. And um, the subscription to Canopy doesn't necessarily um, provide you with like the most popular movies. Like I don't often see a lot of superhero action films there, um, but it does provide great um, content for uh, kind of indie films and documentaries. So if those things really appeal to you, that is a great service to look into. Um, plus it's free with your library card. Um, also, if you want to talk more about cutting your cable, or if you have other technology questions, you can reach out to the library by coming to a tech help session. Those are offered Monday through Friday, or Monday through Thursday, um, Mondays and Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to noon, Tuesdays from 12 to 4, and then we have Senior Tech, which is a peer-to-peer um, -peer service um, for those uh, that see themselves as seniors, and that's offered from 10.30 to 12.30 on Thursdays. Um, otherwise, feel free to give the library a call if you have any questions about what's provided here. Thanks.